Hi! For those of you who are new here, I'm Nitro. I usually make videos covering obscure and interesting things that have happened on Roblox over the course of its nearly two decade long history, but you wouldn't know that if, like many of the other people probably watching this video, you've only seen the most popular video on my channel. In that video, I documented the story of me developing a rap battle game for a group called Meteor Studios, which would later go on to be taken over by a guy called Joriz, who proceeded to transform my game into, well, this. 999 million Robux Obby. Escape RBX Obby, free VIP, diamond emoji. Cosplay like Wednesday, live like a normal, new UI, new morphs, and it just gets worse from there. This is an objectively terrible amalgamation of some of the worst, most shameless clickbait I've ever seen in a Roblox game. And as I found out while making my video, it is by no means one of a kind. There exists a whole industrial complex of CD game devs churning out these games by the dozen every single day on various alternate accounts. And it's easy to see why. I mean, look at these visits numbers. 1 million, 1.6 million, 1.9 million. The game I covered in my video has 7.8 million visits. Or does it? If you look at the Wayback Machine, you can see that this game had pretty much all of its 7.8 million visits before it was converted into a clickbait garbage game. I have a hunch that many of these games haven't had nearly as many real visits as they'd like you to believe. Maybe they were converted from something else, just like this game. Maybe their devs use bots to boost their visit counts, but I refuse to believe that even the youngest of iPad babies could be so easily drawn into playing a game just because it crams as many Gen Alpha keywords into its title and description as possible. So, to test my theory, I'm gonna be doing it myself. I'll be creating 20 of the most clickbaity, spammy Roblox games one could possibly create, uploading them all on different alternate accounts and groups, and seeing if, as a brand new developer, I can actually get rich by putting in no effort and creating a clickbait Roblox game empire. So, before we try to recreate these games, we should probably get to know what's actually in them. What mystical life-drawing energy is hidden within these games that attracts millions of children to them every single day? Money grabs. It's money grabs. Yeah, the main purpose of these games is just to generate as much money as possible. And in order to do that, these game devs will cram as many Game Pass purchase buttons into them as possible until there's just barely enough screen left to see the actual game. Beyond these Game Pass buy buttons is usually something extremely menial yet addictive that can be used to farm as much playtime as possible and milk those sweet, sweet premium payouts. Sometimes it's an extremely loosely themed obby if the dev was feeling like putting in a little extra effort, but 90% of the time, it's this. A Squid Game Glass Bridge Challenge. The creators of Squid Game could never have predicted the amount of damage this particular challenge would cause to millions of innocent parents' wallets. In case you somehow don't know, a Squid Game Glass Bridge is exactly what it looks like. Two pieces of glass in front of you, one is solid and strong, the other one will crash out from under you if you step on it. Repeat 90 bajillion times until you reach the end of the bridge. Promise a special surprise at the end of the bridge, and you can entice toddlers hoping for free Robux to spend hours trying to reach the end, only for the special surprise at the end to be a total lie. For the Jorah's video, I played a lot of these games, and for this one, I dusted off the old Jorah's rabbit hole document once again, this time with a specific goal in mind. Scoping out the competition. So, without further ado, let's take a look at what makes these games tick. What makes these games talk? What makes them use TikTok so often in their clickbait? Let's see what makes a clickbait Roblox game. After playing enough clickbait games to make my brain leak out of my head through my ears, I believe I've nailed down a list of the best, by which I mean most money and playtime making, features that they all kind of have. And I've also come up with some ideas of my own that I think would be good to include. First one's obvious, a crap ton of Game Pass buy buttons. There's no getting around this, you simply can't have a clickbait Roblox game without attacking your audience's eyeballs for as much money as possible. Additionally, there's also usually some kind of GUI message stuck at the top of the screen, urging players to finish the obby or bridge or whatever for an awesome surprise. However, one thing I think these games get wrong is being too vague with what the surprise is. Like, a surprise could be good or bad. I could be looking forward to a million free Robux, or I could be looking forward to a FNAF animatronic jumping out of the screen at me. Both would be surprising. So instead, I'm gonna promise a free UGC Dominus. I don't think this would be against TOS, because while promising something of value is a no-no, a free UGC item would technically be free, so it has no value until it's resold. Aside from GUI-based money farming, every clickbait game worth its 
Secret Salt also has to have physical purchasing areas as well, like VIP doors and purchasable gear givers. Specifically, I like these two ideas from this skibbity toilet themed glass bridge, a way to skip the entire bridge with a vehicle and some exclusive morphs. Of course, in order to get someone to commit to paying for something, it's always a good idea to give them a free sample, which is why this game also has a free morph section, and I think I'll add that as well. I'll also add some paid and free limited hats as well, just to make that promise of a free Dominus at the end a little more believable. And now that we've spent nearly half a page of this script just talking about the ways we can assault players for money, let's talk about the actual game. It's gonna be a glass bridge, obviously, with a giant treasure chest at the end where players can claim their quote-unquote prize. But once the players finish this game and get to the treasure chest, that's where I think what'll turn out to be this game's most evil yet clever strategy kicks in. A while ago, I made a video about these things called Dubit Portals, which you probably haven't seen because it kind of flopped hard. The long and short of it was that there was this company called Dubit that was paying Roblox developers to put big, conspicuous-looking portals in their games. These portals would lead you to a random Roblox game that also had a portal in it, creating a sort of codependent promotional network that fed visitors to all games involved, and also a few brand-sponsored games without portals in them, because those poor little brands are already struggling enough, without having to donate visits to massive giants like poop eating simulator. But despite the infuriating brand related parts of it, in concept it's a pretty smart idea. If I can get players to teleport to another game in my empire, it's basically a second free visit, and they're likely to stick around for at least a couple of minutes to scope out the new game that they randomly got teleported to. But how will I entice players to step through a teleporter? What if we combine the surprise bit and the teleportation bit? At the end of the bridge, instead of just resetting you like most of these games do, my game will teleport you to another game in my empire, and once you spawn into that that game, you'll see an NPC for you to talk to who will tell you that you didn't win the UGC this time around, but if you complete the bridge again, you'll have another chance, which will hopefully entice players to spend even more time in this game, and maybe even teleport to another game at the end, and now that I'm saying this out loud, I'm suddenly realizing just how evil this idea is. But luckily for this video, we're abandoning all morals, so it's all good. And last and also least is the theming. There needs to be some sort of colorful, clickbaity thing to look at, otherwise the game will lose interest faster than you can say Subway surfers gameplay at the bottom of the screen. This is where a sort of experimentation factor comes into play. I'm gonna be using five different clickbaity themes in four games each and seeing which theme generates the best results. The themes I've selected are Skibbity Toilet, The Amazing Digital Circus, FNAF, Pet Simulator slash Adopt Me, and a general flashy rainbow Roblox related theme. That's right, I'm hip. I know what the youngsters are into nowadays. The theming is pretty much just gonna be a few free models scattered around the map and a stolen thumbnail and icon, but we'll get to that later. For now, enough yapping. Let's get building. Okay, so for this build, I'm kind of trying to go as low effort as possible, because all we're really trying to do is lure people in with clickbait, and once they're in, it doesn't really matter too much how high quality my building is. So pretty much everything containing any sort of like script or mesh is going to be a free model. Glass bridge, free model. Gear givers, free models. Morphs, free models. Treasure chest game teleporter, free model. But even while actively trying to go as low effort as possible, I still couldn't help but make my game better than a lot of the games I played in my initial research, without even realizing it, just like subconsciously. I guess my brain just simply couldn't handle there being an air of unprofessionalism to the game. There had to be special meshes, there had to be cool floating text. Everything generally had to have the same aesthetic and mesh well together, which is more than you can say for like half of the other clickbait games I played. Like, what is this? What is this? The basic unthemed game took me just about one workday to build. That includes the glass bridge, the ending island, the free and paid hat section, the paid morphs, the gear buyers, the vehicle skip, which I decided to make a jeep instead of a cart, and all the GUI. I also decided to give the ground studs, because everything on this channel's gotta be classic Roblox related somehow, apparently. I then downloaded this base game, and proceeded to upload two copies each onto five different groups, and two copies each onto five different alternate accounts, just to make sure my empire would be as much like Jorz's as as possible, with an even mix of groups and alts. Then it was time to theme the game, so I spent hours upon hours slaving away in Blender to make the perfect character renders for each character from the franchises I said I'd be using, and precisely building realistic frontline level scenery in each game, and I'm kidding of course, free models for the win. Surprisingly, there weren't actually a whole lot of digital circus free models to choose from, I guess that's just because it's a relatively new franchise, but even still, 21 is a pretty small amount compared to Skibbity Toilet and FNAF. But I managed with what I had, and before I knew it, I had 20 fully themed clickbait games ready to go. Let's have a tour. First up is the Skibbity Toilet game. Here we have... 
camera guy. And there's TV guy, of course. And oh, looky there, it's uh, speaker man. Yeah, speaker man. And of course, Skibbity Toilet, the man himself, in flesh and in porcelain. And just to seal the deal, we have Skibbity Toilet again, but with giant spinning saws. For morphs, you can choose between Noob Skibbity Toilet, Spider Skibbity Toilet, Spibbity Toilet, Secret Agent Man, and what I can only assume is the grandfather of that camera guy from earlier. Next, we have the Digital Circus Game. Plush Pomni over here. Plush Jax over here. Normal Pomni holding Plush Pomni hostage in this corner. Behind her is a line of those little shaped dudes, and we got Kane back here keeping watch over the morphs. Those morphs are a smaller version of Kane, a skinnier version of Jax, a blockier version of Pomni, and Ragatha. Then there's the FNAF Game. The FNAF fanbase created some very cool models for me to use in this one. Surrounding the starting island, we have Nightmare Freddy, Chica, and Bonnie in surprise surprisingly realistic detail. Very spooky. Behind the donation board is Foxy, behind the free hats is Normal Freddy, and for Morse we have once again surprisingly realistic renditions of the four main animatronics. There's also the Adopt Me and Pet Sim game, with the Pet Sim dog and cat on either side of the island, the Adopt Me cat bringing up the rear, the Big Games mascot over here, the Adopt Me dog over here, and Morphs of neon versions of some Adopt Me characters. They're RGB for the true gamers out there. And finally, we have the general Roblox-themed game. Bacon Hair, Noob, Dominus, Rich Guy, Corblox Death Speaker, Morphs of a 2006 Noob, an old-style guest, Corblox Death Speaker, and Headless Horseman, and a double rainbow over the bridge just for extra flair. After the theming, all that was left to do was create all 11 game passes for each individual game and put all the dev products in each individual donation board, which took freaking ages. Seriously, I don't know how I didn't think ahead and see that this would take four goddamn ever. I I think it literally took me an entire extra day of just doing this and add some last minute finishing touches. Namely, adding HD admin to each game so that I wouldn't have to complete the entire bridge every time I wanted to test something and I'd have the opportunity to sell admin as a game pass and putting in one more independent variable to our experiment. See, the glass bridges in these games were made with a free model glass bridge and to make it extra long and have players stay for as long as possible, I stacked five bridges back to back to make one mega long bridge. However, after doing a bit more testing and research, I began to worry that that might actually have made it too long and it would cause the majority of players to rage quit. So I decided to make half of the games have a three bridge long bridge instead of a five bridge long bridge in order to see which length would get more traction. After that was done, all that was left to do was spam each game with as many gen alpha clickbait keywords as possible and steal a few thumbnails and icons from actually successful games. And finally, after just around two days of work, my empire of 20 shady looking clickbait games was ready to open for business. So, the plan was to leave the games public for around a month. This would hopefully give ample time for them to catch on in Roblox's algorithm, as it usually takes around a week to do that, and for them to even potentially go viral. But I decided I would also check in on them at around the two week mark, just to see how things seem to be going. So, for two long weeks, I let the game sit on Roblox, surely racking up thousands upon thousands of visits. After all, how could they not be? As I knew from looking at other clickbait games, kids just couldn't resist clicking on those sweet, sweet skibbity toilet thumbnails, and once they were in the game, there would be enough for them to do to keep them in there for a long, long while. At the very least, I knew I'd get some players, but I was really hoping that one of them might go turbo viral. I could easily see one of them getting 10,000, 20,000, maybe even 100,000 visits. For those two long weeks, I was like a kid on Christmas, eagerly awaiting the massive visits number that surely lay before me. And then, at long last, it was time to check back in on the games. And... No. No, 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 this can't be. I, I I made sure to include as much clickbait as possible. I literally maxed out the character limit for a Roblox description and title. I, I copied these games' techniques to a T. How? Somehow, after all that research, all that hard work copying other people's ideas, each and every one of these games had zero visits aside from my own when I was playtesting. Not a single person had clicked on these shady, spammy looking games. I think this lends a lot of credence to my theory that the developers of these games are using some sort of illicit tactic to boost their numbers. I'd hazard a guess that a lot of these visits are either bots, traffic from hacked, actually popular games, or visits from a time when the game was something entirely different. Then again, some of these games actually do have small active player bases. Searching Glass Bridge and Experiences reveals games with hundreds and even thousands of active players. There's simply no getting around the fact that kids are actually clicking on these games, which means that 
I'm doing something wrong that's preventing them from finding mine. And unfortunately, I think I know what that is. It's something that I really, really didn't want to have to do going into this project, but now looking at these results, I think it's a necessity. I have to advertise these games. I've pretty much already failed this experiment, because my main goal with this video was to see if this was an actual viable way to get rich off of nothing as a brand new developer on Roblox. If the reason why so many of these kinds of games existed was because they were essentially infinite money glitches that anyone could do in order to make a quick buck. And well, the answer is clearly no, at least not all the time. In order to get games like these off the ground, you clearly have to have a bit of advertising budget already on you, which I definitely wouldn't have had when I was a kid, because my parents were very much against the idea of paying real money for virtual things, and I'm sure a lot of you watching this can relate. Even worse, Roblox recently completely changed the way advertising is done. It's now all handled through this new advertising manager system, which you need to create a whole new quote-unquote advertising account to use. Already a rough start. And instead of bidding however many Robux you want to spend on advertising space, you have to purchase these things called ad credits, which are 285 Robux each, and you have to purchase a minimum of 10 of them at a time, meaning that in order to advertise your game with anything other than banner ads, which no one clicks on, you need to cough up roughly 3,000 Robux, which you have no guarantee of making back with your game. That song and dance isn't attractive to beginner developers. If I had to do all that when I was a kid, I'd probably have never advertised my games. I'd have felt too intimidated. But I'm an adult now, with my own money to spend. So I went ahead and purchased 10 ad credits, and used them to sponsor this game, Coach Ice Inc.'s Escape Skibbity Toilet for free UGC. Even though this is a very small advertising budget, my hope was that all this game would need would be a few hundred players in order to start snowballing into a much bigger game. Hopefully the people who clicked this game would play it for a long time, which the Roblox algorithm would appreciate and promote the game more as a result. Also, because of its teleporter at the end, those visits would hopefully transfer over to my other games as well. At the very least, I didn't want to go into the red for this project. If I could get enough visits to make back all the Robux I'd spent on advertising, that would be enough to make me happy at this point. So, I was pretty sad when I checked back in on the game a week later, and it had a paltry 500-something visits. I'm honestly not entirely sure why this didn't work. Even now, writing this script and looking back on everything I did, my logic still seems pretty sound. I copied all the most successful tactics of all the dozens of different clickbait games I played, I'd taken good looking thumbnails from extremely successful games, and still, the Roblox algorithm did not want to pick these games up for some reason. I'd actually be pretty psyched about this and see it as a testament to Roblox's ability to filter out bad games and promote good games if it weren't for the fact that several games exactly like mine had seen incredible numbers seemingly organically. Maybe it was because the game I promoted was a five bridge long game and I was actually right about five bridges being too long and causing most people to rage quit. Maybe my advertising budget was just simply too small and didn't garner enough plays to get any real consideration from the algorithm, or maybe it was just purely a case of bad luck, I honestly can't say. Perhaps lending credibility to the bridge too long theory is the fact that not a single other game in the network got any visits as a result of this campaign. The Skibbity Toilet game was far in the lead at 500-something visits, and all the other games were still stuck at a big, fat zero. Needless to say, I definitely wasn't making that advertising money back. When I first saw this, I was honestly unsure whether I'd be able to make this video at all. There was no satisfying conclusion here. Forget being dead in the water, these games were dead before they even left land. After the results of that ad campaign, there was no way I'd be wasting any more money trying to advertise these games again, knowing that it'd probably just fall flat again. It seemed that my dreams of becoming a viral Roblox clickbait superstar were over. But then I remembered something. Why do I need to pay for advertising when I have a perfectly good YouTube community page completely for free? I have, for all intents and purposes, failed this experiment. It's gone. It's dead. I have proven unequivocally that if I were a beginner developer trying to get rich off this type of game, I couldn't do it. So now all bets and rules are off, and my one and only goal is to get one of these games to have a lot of visits. So I made a community post asking you guys to just give this amazing digital circus game a play. That's all. I didn't say you had to complete the bridge, I didn't say you had to check out any of the other games in the group, I just asked you to play the game, and I included 
included this cool picture of some wolves to get your attention. A last little bit of clickbait to steal my status as a clickbait dev. That was around a week ago as of writing this script, and as of now, you guys have helped this game to achieve a grand total of... 710 visits. That's not exactly viral, but I would just like to give each one of those 710 people who played this random game I asked you to play a huge thanks. It's amazing that I'm in a position now where I can just put out a request asking people to do something and that many people will just do it. And not only did you guys check out this game, but it seems like some of you did a bit of snooping and found and played my other games as well. The Skibbity Toilet game that I originally advertised and got only 500 visits now has a total of over a thousand. And even the games not under the Coach Ice Inc. group or any group at all have gained a few visits also. You guys are such a cool audience and I can't thank you enough for bearing with me while I'm doing stupid things like this. And we actually hit a hundred thousand subscribers recently. I still can't believe we actually did that. It doesn't feel real, and every time someone mentions that number to me, it makes me have to do a pause and dwell on how big that number actually is. I can't thank you enough for helping me get to this point, and yes, I will be doing another Q&A in the next video to celebrate, so please leave whatever questions you want to ask me down in the comments below, but I will also be doing a little something extra for this milestone that I'll tell you more about in that next video. It's gonna be a contest, and I still need a bit of time to get the details in order, but I can already tell it's gonna go great, and I hope you'll submit something. For now, thanks so much for being a part of my first 100k. You guys have already changed my life in so many ways, and boneless chicken for the win. Anyway, let's see what we can learn from this whole clickbait deving thing. I think the main takeaway we can all learn from this video is, don't do this. Don't ever do this. Clickbait games are terrible ways to make money. All they do is steal other people's work, scam kids out of their time, and chances are they won't ever get off the ground anyway, because so many other games like them exist that whether or not yours takes off is up to either luck or your willingness to bot games, buy games, or spend an insane amount of money on advertising. You can include clickbait in your game, that's totally fine with me. After all, the literal definition of clickbait is just something that gets people to click on your game. But you have to actually have a game to pair along with your clickbait. Don't just farm players for money. Any players you do get from games like that won't stick around for long, and before you know it, your audience will either grow up and realize that these kinds of games suck, or move on to the next trend. Look at all the games in my Jorah's Rabbit Hole document. Almost none of these games have active player bases at all anymore, and the ones that do only have a dozen or two at any given point in time. As for these very popular games that come up when you search Glass Bridge and Experiences, I have a feeling that if we check back in on them in a few years' time, we'll see that these active player numbers have fallen quite dramatically. Be creative make something original. If you're successful, you'll have players coming back to your game for quite a long while, because your game will be the only thing that does what it does. It'll be irreplaceable. So, yeah, this experiment failed. And you know what? I'm glad it did. If you want to play these games yourself for some reason, you can find a link to the Skibbity Toilet game in the description of this video. I'll be making all the others private because I don't want one of them to accidentally blow up and actually lure a bunch of kids into spending money. And with all that being said, I've been Nitro Lord, and I will see you all next time. Bye!